Hello, my name is Lorenzo, and today we're talking about transitioning from indoor climbing to outdoor climbing. So let's say you've been going out to the gym for a fair amount of time now, and you're ready to make that next step into your climbing career, venturing into the great outdoors. But with that decision comes a lot of questions as well. What gear do I need? How do I get all that expensive gear back? And most important of all, where are all the holds? Well, sit tight, grab your favorite snack, and let's make sure your next steps in your climbing career are well prepared. Now, of course, having the right kit is a fundamental factor. But before we tackle that, we'll go over some of the major differences you find outdoors as opposed to indoors. Now, let's start off with etiquette. This is something you'll learn over time, but we've made a video crash course and it's linked down below in case you're interested. But it all comes down to be respectful to the environment, be respectful to other climbers, respect the rules of the crag, respect nature, don't litter around, and brush those damn tick marks. I'm serious, brush the damn tick marks. Now let's talk grading. Now with grading systems, admittedly, it can become a little bit confusing. There are so many systems out there. You have the French system, the English system, the American system, the UIAA system, a lot of systems. But in its core, the system used outdoors should not be any different from the system used indoors. What does get affected is the grading difficulty. Grading difficulty wise, you might now be at a point where you comfortably top rope on a 6C which is no mean feat. And you expect, of course, nothing less from going outdoors. But be ready to be disappointed, but be excited about all of the other challenges you get to explore that climbing has on offer, like route finding or safety and many, many more. You're transitioning from a safe environment into a more risky one. So it's natural that at the start, things will feel a little bit more scary and more difficult. But don't be discouraged if your grades don't match up because as long as you're having fun, the grades will come. So as you can see, we're outdoors and you might be wondering where are all the colored holds? Well, there are none. So finding your route and the holds might sometimes be a little difficult, but don't get discouraged because it just takes some time to get over it. And once you get used to it, you'll be smashing those routes in a minute. For your first session, a top rope is your best friend. But to get the rope up there, you're going to have to need a buddy, and a buddy has to lead the route. Back when I made my transition from indoor to outdoor climbing, I learned by trial and error, and it's not recommended. I wish I had the facilities to look for a climbing buddy. A great way to do this is go to your gym or local alpine club to see if they have any trips. These trips are amazing because you get to learn a lot of stuff and potentially meet your next climbing buddy. Now, if all of that fails, you can always opt in for a climbing or a mountain guide. Yes, you will have to pay these people a fee, but the amount of knowledge on safety and skill you will gain in this time, it's immense. Next up, location. It is really important to do your research about the location that you're visiting. If you know what grade the climbs are, then your overall experience is going to be massively enhanced. And you do this by using a guidebook or a topo. Now, I personally prefer to buy these topos locally because it supports the local climbing community and usually these topos are made by local climbers. But you can get them at the store, you can get them at the library, or you can get them online. Now, for the purpose of this video, we're just covering the stuff that is not crossing over with indoor use. So, we're going to assume that you already have your belay device, your harness, all that stuff. So, let's get into it. Now, this is the moment in the video where most of you have been waiting for, and I'm gonna let you guess on this one. Because usually, you can get away with a short one, but outdoors, the roots get longer. So the need for a more longer one is necessary. Ah, 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 let's talk about ropes. Now, a rope like the virus, it is perfect for this situation. It is very thick, so it can withstand a lot of abrasion and a lot of falls. Now, if the roots get a little dampy and the situation is going to be a little rainy with the weather, then we have the booster, which is essentially kind of the same rope, but it's dry treated, so it's protected against absorbing water. Now, next up, quick draws. Now, this is your main security equipment. You attach these to the bolts, which are pre-drilled into the wall, 
and on the other end of the carabiner you attach a rope. Now a good start for your quick draw rack is the black diamond hot wire. Now this comes with six quick draws. Now usually six is not really enough to cover most of the cracks. Usually you're looking at about 12 to 16. But hey, if you're sharing with a friend, then six would do just fine. One hazard that you don't have indoors, but is very much apparent outdoors is falling rocks. And therefore, when we're at the crack, we always wear a helmet. Now the Camp Storm is excellent for this. It is foam on the inside and it's a hard shell on the outside, which is great for protection from top falling debris. Now, if weight is an issue and you want to go as light as possible, on the other end of the spectrum, we have the Petzl Sirocco, which has a plastic top impact, but all of it on the side is foam. Therefore, it's less durable, but saves a lot of weight. And last but not least, the last essential item you need to complete your outdoor climbing rack is your sling or your cow tail or your pig tail. There's lots of variation of names for this kind of tool, but essentially what it does it's on your harness and it's there to attach yourself to the wall. So in case you need to re-thread the rope through the anchor to make your top rope, you can attach this first and you can do that with ease without any risk of falling to the ground. Now I personally like the Camp Swain because it's adjustable, but there are many like it on the market. You have Petzl, Beal, Black Diamond, you name it, they all have their version. So you have to find out whichever you like best. So here we are arrived at the top of the route and we're going to attach ourselves to the anchor. And what we use for this is a cow tail or a lawn yard. This is mine. So I'm going to attach it, close it up. And an important note about a cow tail or a lawn yard is that it doesn't come with the carabiner. So it's very important that you attach a locking carabiner to the lawn yard. And of course, the last honorable mention is bring plenty of snacks and water. You gotta stay hydrated because when you're having fun, it's easy to forget that. With all these tips, I hope that I've eased your mind a bit and you can go tackle the great outdoors in full confidence. On the Epic TV shop, we're currently offering a lot of deals on all sport climbing equipment. So make sure to get your climbing deals over there. See you on the next one.